Hello and welcome to the World Government Summit. This is the GX video series and podcast. We're filming live from WGS 2023 in Dubai, where more than 5,000 government leaders, thinkers, change makers are, have gathered for this interesting and amazing conference. In this series, we talk with leaders and thinkers and people who are creating change in the world right now and in the future. In this episode, I have with me Dr. Eva Mueller Stuller, partner at EY. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> Thank so, you for inviting me. <laughs> you're welcome. What have been your observations here at WGS this year? It's been fully attended. Uh, you know, attendance was really great. Sessions were amazing. Tell us, uh, tell us what you saw. I think it was absolutely mind-blowing how government got together, how thought leaders got together, and we talked about all the digital innovation, about data science, about AI, the metaverse, and also about the roles and responsibilities of government. So getting all these um, yeah, thought leaders um, and ch changes in one's place, um, and then also the government with a very open mindset, very engaged and saying, how can we improve the life of our citizens and our services. Yeah, it so was great. You, you, you lead uh, AI and data initiatives, right? And you look after, of course, not just the region, but you're learning all about what's happening in the world. You're, you're meeting different interesting people. Help us understand where is AI headed right now with respect to governments? Are governments using AI in some parts of the world? Yes, so we see um, different parts of government and uh, adapting it at different um, time, speeds, and so on. We have intelligent services, border control, immigration, all of them were quite early adopter and are really driving it forward. They're very sophisticated, but it also goes down through all the sectors. So everything that in you, you do as a government, everything that can be measured can be changed. Everywhere in every decision, you can use data science and AI to make better, smarter, cheaper decisions. Um, we're moving into hyper personalization for for the citizens. So um, I think there isn't a single angle um, and a single person working in government who should not be thinking about how can we, they use data science and AI to actually improve their their daily job. Mm -hmm. In recent days, over the last, I would say maybe a year or two years. We've seen a little bit of a surge in generative AI, right? We've seen in just the last three months, something called chat GPT-3, and everybody's fascinated, everybody's talking about it. Uh, where does uh, such disruptive innovations, you know, come into play when it's government, when it's government services? Ooh, I think it's an excellent opportunity actually for governments, but also you have to look at the risk. So um, as an opportunity, it's, um, it can be used to improve the services. It can be used to help people interact with government. It can help to educate people, to bring different services together and to, to break down different silos, for example. It makes it easier often to interact. But then you have to also be aware that um, the government's mandate is to look after everybody, not just about the heavy data users and the heavy adapter and early adapter and educated people. It also has a big of what we would call the silent generation, people who are not engaging in data science and AI, and are not technology um, savvy people um, or my parents or older generations. Mm. So um, the government really has to be aware that they leave no one behind right. and that they um, on one hand use these services and provide these services to um, improve um, the interaction for some, but also with maybe shifting some of the workload to chatbots, they, it gives them the freedom to focus on the others even more. Excellent. So you were part of uh, the GX Forum, the fifth forum uh, that has taken place over the last five years, uh, bigger than ever before, uh, and it's grown significantly over the past uh, five years. And your uh, panel was about AI. It was about helping understand where it is now, where it's going. Uh, let, let me help, uh, help me understand and help our viewers and listeners understand, uh, maybe from a regional perspective, how's, how's the Middle East doing with adoption to technology and, of course, AI? But where are we? Are we comparing ourselves with other regions? How strong are we? What's the path forward? 
Um, I think we're definitely um, up there in the game. We have some of the most advanced um, policies about, um, for example, in Saudi, the NDMO guidelines and so on, about um, developing strategies for governments, um, how data should be handled, how data should be shared, but also how data should be protected. All of that goes into a very clear futuristic mindset on saying, how can we not just look at the data, but also put in um, tangible help for governmental entities and yeah. corporate to really advance on the journey. So what are the right use cases, how to build the strategy and the roadmap? So um, overall, I think it's um, we're at a very, very interesting um, yeah, tipping point. Right, right. There's, there's one word that always comes up in technology conversations, especially when it's emerging technology and it's rapidly growing technologies, is regulation, right? Regulation. Is regulation a good thing or a bad thing? First of all, that's one, one thing I'd like to ask you. And the second being, should AI and technologies within the bigger circle of AI, should they be regulated? What, what does regulation mean? Um, I love that question because the government actually has so many different roles to play. One of them is like the user, the early adapter. The other one is the regulator, and but also the enabler. Mm. And and these two heads, people always think they're actually kind of like contradicting. How can I, have, on one hand, regulate, yeah. and on the other hand, enable? But there is, is a big overlapping because you want to regulate the right kind of advancement. So the regulation, for example, when people think about data um, governance framework, this is a kind of regulation that actually is a massive enabler yeah. because by getting the companies to focus on good data and quality data mm -hmm. um, of roles and responsibilities and so on, that is actually what they need to put in place to, to then leapfrog into the next step of like being a user, being um, able to build AI on, on their data. Right. So um, that is one thing. Then when we talk about regulation, we think about trusted AI. Mm -hmm. So it has to be um, transparent. It has to be um, unbiased and um, all of these um, factors. And that is something you need to do good AI. So the regulation side is actually something that... Um, cuts out all of the noise, all, yeah, a lot of the yeah. failures, a lot yeah. of the lessons learned are put into the regulation. Mm -hmm. and, and so it actually speeds up the innovation, in my opinion. Right. Uh, here, especially in the United Arab Emirates, uh, uh, we have the Minister of uh, AI, His Excellency Omar al Olama, And uh, UAE is, I would say, the first or maybe the only country with a Minister of AI that's dedicated at looking at, you know, the impact of the technology and how it can grow and help uh, do many, many things. Um, is, is that being too futuristic or is that being real given how fast AI is emerging? And what I'm trying to say is that, uh, is UAE working on current problems, on problems that don't exist? What do you think? I think it's absolutely brilliant because future problems immediately come um, yeah. current problem and the pace we're looking at is so increasing. So um, when we first um, established the role of a minister of AI, a lot of countries were like, yeah, but why AI not technology yeah. and so on? And is it really necessary? But now we see so many changes yeah. and so many thought leadership um, came out of it that it actually opens the door for, for a lot of like innovation, change management and so on. Yeah. So it was absolutely brilliant in my opinion, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, I think this is the right environment uh, for, for, for such discussions to thrive. Uh, lastly, you know, there's many different areas of AI. Are, are there some that you believe will grow faster? You know, there's uh, neural networks, there is machine learning, there is uh, uh, LSTM. There's so many different things happening. What are some of the ones that you would uh, say that would be faster adopted or are here uh, rather than very far away? I think, so when we, when we looked at data and AI, um, and data science and AI a long time ago, we always thought it's like the smartest algorithm, the smartest um, boy with a hoodie in a basement and so on. And we then saw it was a recipe for failure um, because um, the smartest algorithm on the worst data doesn't get you anything. The smartest algorithm on good data without any change management yeah. doesn't get you anywhere. So I think what we will see as a big trend is, is the, the universe around the algorithm. So from 
from like the, the data governance office to all the way like the visualization to the change management and yeah. processes that have to be in place. All of that will, will, will grow. Um, and I think from when you, um, I think with ChatGTP, it will actually now um, trigger a new revolution kind of in, in that field. We see a lot of our services um, from Microsoft and Google and so on um, saying, no, we're going to incorporate um, large language models and um, chat GDP like um, algorithms to really change our, our offerings. And I think that will really impact how we work together, yep. um, how we interact as a society yep. and also um, the governmental services. Um, where in the past chatbots were hardly yeah. ever fulfilling the promise and the success we were hoping they would do. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Eva, for joining us at this uh, episode. And we uh, are looking forward to catching up with you again uh, next year, probably. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, that's the end of this episode here at WGS. Uh, subscribe to this channel, listen to it, share it with others. And thank you so much. Until the next episode.